go. Oh, hey guys, just one second. I'm about to beat my high score in Snake. And yeah, <laughs> eight. What's up, guys? I'm Chill Pill, and welcome back to another episode of Black Sheep Reviews. Man, this thing brings back a lot of memories. This plastic brick was actually the first phone I ever owned back in the day. Nothing all that impressive about it. I could call and text. No camera, no Facebook, no Clash Game of War of Clans. <laughs> I was practically living in the Dark Ages in the mid-2000s. There was one thing I could do with it, though. I could play the crap out of some snake. You know, the game where you play as a little rectangle, collect little squares, and become a even bigger rectangle? That was my jam. And speaking of snakes collecting weird stuff that makes absolutely no sense, I recently took a crack at Snake Pass, the latest game from developer Sumo Digital. In this unique spin on a platformer, you play as a doofy looking snake named Noodle who must slither and climb his way around a slew of different jungle levels to find the missing keystones and restore the world's portals. So, basically the same thing as that? Question is, was Snake Pass a gas, or should you just maybe pass on this snake? Let's find out! Here you go, this is the game in all its next-gen graphical glory. Man, just look at that Unreal 4 engine go! <gasps> He's going in for another one! Alright, fine, here's the real game, but just a fair warning, the plots are practically identical. In Snake Pass, you play as Noodle, a sleepy little serpent whose favorite pastimes include chilling on branches and practicing his over-the-top facial expressions. He's joined by his hummingbird chum Doodle, and they have to work together to return all of the missing keystones to the altar so they can, uh, I don't know, return home, I guess? Wherever that is. But where or where could these missing keystones be? Surely some nefarious evil must have stolen them away, and you have to go on an adventure to thwart the baddies and... Oh. It's just right here. Yeah, I found it. Yay! I'm so good at this game. It sure is fortunate that whatever slightly moved these keystones away from their altar only decided to drop them off in semi-inconvenient spots on the super confined floating island instead of throwing them over the edge altogether, making it impossible for you to continue forward. That might put a slight damper on things. Not really the most compelling of stories, honestly, but I've seen worse attempts at keeping a coherent plot. Most of the dialogue in this game is spoken by your buddy Doodle and these weird tiki god thingies, but funnily enough, even though Noodle doesn't say a word the entire time, the little happy and worried sounds he makes gives him the most personality in the game by far. I mean, his adorably doofy smile and elated tone when he grabs one of these gold coins always gets me. But come on, Noodle. Hasn't anyone ever told you money doesn't buy happiness? You ain't even got pockets to put all your coins in. Oh, don't make that face. And now I feel bad. Holy crap, this game is gorgeous. Putting the Unreal and Unreal engine, the world design follows a floating jungle island motif that is just super vibrant and pleasant to look at. From the lush grassy areas of World 1 to the tranquil lagoons of World 2 to the glowing hot charcoal pits of World 3, it all just looks so good. Noodle wasn't the biggest fan of that last one. And speaking of everyone's favorite reptile, Noodle's character design is just perfect for a cute platformer like this. He and Doodle look like they could have been ripped right out of a Pixar movie. Heck, Noodle might have been that snake that was always hiding out in Woody's boot for all I know. He's just so lovable and cuddly. But wait, wasn't there an old rhyme about snakes like him? Hmm, what was that saying again? Let's see, red touch black, Friend of Jack, and Red Touch Yellow, kill a fellow. Hmm. Hmm. That's one poisonous ass snake! Well, poisonous or not, you can't be scared of a face like this. Even Ophidiophobes got to admit, that's one adorable snake. Cause I'm a snake. I'm a slithery little snake. 
I particularly like the ability to change Noodle's expression with the touch of a button, a la Little Big Planet. This little guy was really well animated and stood out amongst all the background animals strewn about the worlds. My only wish was that he wasn't the only character the devs focused on. Yeah, you have Doodle, but he just hovers around doing, like, hummingbird things. There aren't any other animals to interact with, no enemies to avoid. The world just felt kind of empty to me. And that makes poor little Noodle sad. Don't worry, guy. Would it make you feel better if Doodle touched your butt a little? I thought so. Happy Snake. I freaking love this soundtrack. It's just so jungly. With a strong showcasing of drums, the marimba, guitar, and various flutes, the music and sound effects perfectly complement Snake Pass's tranquil environments and gameplay and has such a relaxed feel to it. But that's just what I would expect from the game's talented composer, David Wise. For those of you who don't know, David Wise is the brilliant mind behind some of the most beloved game soundtracks of the 90s, like Donkey Kong Country 2 and Diddy Kong Racing, to just name a couple. Kind of funny that both of these games take place in a jungle setting, too. Seems like he's kind of typecasting himself a bit. Most of the games he composes for are just bursting at the seams with tons of memorable music, but there's only like six songs in Snake Pass. I don't even have enough material for a quick musical montage like we always do, so just listen to the background music in each section of the review closely. It's basically the same thing. Kinda. Not really. Come on, David. I need more. I need my music fix, man. Oh well. I guess I'll just have to get it some other way. If you find yourself really enjoying Mr. Wise's music in Snake Pass, you should really do yourself a favor and give the ukulele soundtrack a listen. Both he and Grant Kirkhope do an amazing job with the music in that game as well. In fact, give the game a go in general. It isn't as bad as some reviewers would have you believe, and it definitely has one of the best soundtracks I've heard all year. Hands down. Davey and Kirky, you guys are the beast's niece. Wait a sec. This guy looks familiar. Let's see. Snick, minus pants, hat, and cell phone. Plus bird, carry the three equals. Yup, trouser is noodle. So, if he doesn't have any pants now, does that mean he's snaked? <laughs> I'll see myself out. The controls are where things start to get interesting in Snake Pass. Rather than a typical jump from platform A to platform B formula, Noodle must instead strategically wrap his body around various objects to climb up stuff or get across gaps. I applaud Sumo Digital for trying something truly unique with their game's mechanics, but man, is the learning curve ever steep. For example, you don't just move forward by moving the joystick. You have to hold the right trigger and then wiggle the stick back and forth to emulate how a snake would slither in real life. I'm not slither, I'm not slither, 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 slither. And when you want to climb up something in this quite literal jungle gym, you have to wind Noodle's body around something solid, then hold the left trigger to constrict his muscles so that he might have something to push off of to go higher. So much wrapping and squeezing just to climb up a little way. I guess you could say the way this snake scales can get a little tedious. Where's the button that turns me into a coil so I can jump around like Rattly in Donkey Kong Country 2, huh? What's really fun is when you realize you can say, screw the controls, and just cheese some of the harder sections by gunning it over gaps. No, but seriously, the developers did a great job with creating the video game industry's very first realistic snake simulator. There is room for improvement, though. I personally would have loved for them to have a button dedicated to unhinging Noodle's jaw so that he could finally eat Doodle. Yeah, okay, Noodle's a vegetarian, or whatever, but this little humming D-bag never helped me when I needed it most. You can call on your bird friend, who will then come and assist you with not dying, but it seemed like he was trying to drop me on purpose most of the time. Uh-oh. Crap! Doodle! Doodle, help me! Grab my butt! Doodle! It's not weird! Doodle! I trusted you! As you crawl around the levels and collect all the keystones, blue boogers and gold doubloons get ready to fall. A lot. 
Although that's just ridiculous. Why would a snake be living in such an impractically designed floating island like this one anyways? Everyone knows a snake's true natural habitat is nestled inside a can of chips or nuts. Kind of like this one here. You okay there, fella? Best if open before January 2014. He's fine. What's even more frustrating is there isn't an autosave feature for whenever you grab one of these things. So if you fall to your death trying to grab one, you're sent back to the latest save point and lose all your recent hard earned progress. This really isn't so bad in the early levels, but once you get to worlds three and four, I started to get a tad frustrated. I don't really hate snakes, but this shit right here really got me like... Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? There was a lot to enjoy with Sumo Digital's latest video game outing. The levels were breathtakingly gorgeous, the music was so chill and soothing, and Noodle has the most endearing design for a snake that I've seen outside of a Disney movie. If you can get past the initial gameplay difficulty spike, you'll find that Snake Pass has a lot to offer. I just wish there was more of it. I felt like by the time I had gotten a firm grasp on the game's controls, all 15 levels had just flown by. And what's your reward for finishing the game? Batman Detective Vision. Yup, now you can see through mountains and find all the blue goobers and gold coins you may have missed on your first go round. But, what happens if you collect everything, you might ask? Maybe a secret level or something? Nope, it's just a new look for Noodle and Doodle. A uh, snake skin, if you will. Doesn't really seem worth it to me. What would have been cool is if, at the beginning of every level, you start out as an itty bitty snake and can reach certain blue globs, but as you collect them, you grow bigger and bigger so you can reach other stuff that was previously out of reach. You know, like a certain other game I mentioned before. That and a boss battle or two. Like, they had you pulling levers and rotating platforms multiple times throughout the game. Why not use these mechanics against a boss? I think that would have been pretty fun, but maybe I'm just crazy. I probably am. There is a time trial mode that opens up for every stage after you beat it so you can be the fastest snack in the jungle. Snack. If that's your thing, but I'm not super partial to time trial modes myself. I don't know. The entire thing just felt like a giant fleshed out tech demo to me. Like the devs were trying to gauge the player's interest in the game before releasing the rest of it. Who knows? Maybe they're working on another one with more content. Guess I'll just have to wait for them to release Snake Pass 2, the sequel. Once I finally got used to the game's unique controls, I really enjoyed playing Snake Pass. Getting to explore the lush jungle world and listen to the relaxing music as I slithered and climbed around the environment as Noodle the Snake was... It was just a whole heck of a lot of fun, albeit very short-lived. Even though the control's steep learning curve may end up discouraging some players and the plot and endgame content are pretty... boring, I'd still recommend giving this game a try. That's why I give this game a rating of... Middle of the Flock. So, until next time, this chill pill reminding you, don't worry about getting old. It doesn't last that long. Later! Hey guys, hope you liked the video. Not to be a total pain in the ass, but if you could give this video a like, comment, and subscribe, we would fang you very much. Alright, I'm done with the snake puns. Question of the day, what did you guys think about how Snake Pass played? Did you like how Noodle handled? Tell us in the comments below and we'll see you next time.